So today for our second watercolor class, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk a little bit about brushes and explain, you know, the different parts of a brush. And then after that, um, last week we talked about flash, uh, um, flat wash. Also this week, we're going to talk about a graded wash. And what's a graded wash? Well, um, that's not a good example. But I wanted to show you a, a painting that I finished this week. Nice watercolor, the barn. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. Um, so what's a graded wash? I have an example here. Yes. So on this, you can see examples. So this is pretty much a flat wash because it's pretty much the same tone of blue throughout, you know. Whereas if you look at this one, it's darker here and it's lighter at the bottom. So this would be considered a graded wash. And so this could be like a nice sky. If I turn it like this, this could be almost like uh, like water or like a lake. Mm -hmm. um, here is another example of a graded wash made with red. And this is another example we made with two colors. So from, from red to yellow without any lines in between. Um, so let's start talking about brushes a little bit. So brushes exist in different uh, sizes and forms. So this would be considered a flat brush. It's a one inch flat brush. So it's flat because the tip of the brush is flat. That's why it's considered a flat brush. This would also be considered a flat brush. And you can also have a small flat brush. So it's flat and the ferrule is also, uh, it's skinnier than when you look at it this way. Now there are also, here, this is a good example. So there's also a round brush. So this round brush is, it's very nice. And the head of it um, is, you know, is, is great because the way that it's set up, um, when I dip it in the water or in the paint, it actually, um, the belly of the head, it will accumulate a lot of water and a lot of pigment for me to paint. So I can paint, I can go a long way with this. Now, in this case, you can see the ferrule has been taped right here to the handle because um, this had become loose and came off, sadly. So I taped it. But um, this usually happens when, if you wash your brushes with water and you use hot water, the glue that's inside the ferrule that's, that glues the ferrule to the handle will become loose and that's how it comes off. So you, when you wash your brushes, you should always uh, remember to use cold water. So this is a big round brush. This would be a small round brush. A round brush has a round ferrule as opposed to a flat brush that has you know, a skinny side mm -hmm. and a white side. Now there's also a brush like this, for example. This is a good watercolor brush. It's got a lot of hair. And so that the, the belly will accumulate a lot of water. And, but the tip is not a fine tip. It's a round. So this is called a mop. And it's very nice to do a large area that does not have any kind of sharp edges. There's also this one here. This is called a filbert. And um, it's, it's around at the head, except there's a tip that is very fine. And so this, you can tell when I put it sideways, um, it, the belly has a lot of hair. And so uh, it will contain a lot of water. And a, this is a good brush. A good brush is defined by a brush that doesn't lose its hair, has a, a head, where the belly will accumulate a lot of water and it's got a fine tip. The tip doesn't look super fine, but if I were to whip it, oh, I'm gonna whip it. 
you can tell how it's got a fine point. And so therefore with this brush, I can paint a whole painting like this one because it's got the fine tip for the detail. And it also has, you know, a, a belly that accumulates quite a bit of water and pigment when I need to. I uh, thought there was one more that I wanted to show you. Ah, a brush like this one. So this would be considered a round brush, but because of the length of the hair, uh, this brush, it's called, um, okay. now, I'm, now I'm only remembering the name in French. <laughs> it's a trainard, that's a word in French, but um, it's, a, it's a rigor, that's what it's called. And the reason it's called a rigor is because when artists who paint boat, when they want to paint the ropes on all the, you know, the rigging, mm -hmm. um, then they use, they use this kind of brush. There are thinner ones and bigger ones like this, but it also accumulates a lot of water in the belly and uh, it's got a fine tip. So it's pretty good. All right. Have you guys been listening really well to all of my explanations? Yes. 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 The one part of the brush that I haven't talked about and I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, let's see, I'm going to take this one. No, uh, this one, this one's big. So this part here where there is, you know, you can tell that there, there has been like a tool that, that pressed all the way around to make sure that it grabs onto the handle. This part here is called the crump. This. It's like a cramp, but it's crump. Mm -hmm. So now that you guys have confirmed that you have listened really well, I'm going to put you to the test. <laughs> so I'm going to display, I'm going to share my screen and display uh, the brush. And now I'm going to give you a few minutes to uh, note on your sheet what are the different parts. Oh, <laughs> So now you can see the different parts. All right. Um, I also wanted to bring your attention to sizes. So if I show you, for example, this picture here, this is um, the different sizes for the point, pointed round brushes by Winsor Newton. Uh, they're synthetic sable brush. And this is the numbering that this company uses for their brushes two, four, six, and eight for this particular pointed round brush. So the synthetic sable brush could be in different shapes in this for this company, whereas the pointed round is the actual shape of the head of the brush, all right? And I wanted to show you another example, this one. It's a Dick Blick brand. I have to show you a little smaller. Uh, so here, these are the, the flat brushes. You can see they're all flat. And the numbering is slightly different. See, it goes from zero, number two, number four. So, so far, pretty good. But then it goes, it's one quarter because this represents the width of the head and so the numbering doesn't keep growing to maybe number six or number eight and then the next one is a half half inch so that's why it's it the number of the brush is half and the handle is even different so when someone says oh yeah i have a brush that is number eight and someone else says oh but mine is a number three and they have the same size brush is because they have different brands. So each brand will have its own numbering. So if someone says, oh, buy a number six, then you, you need to make sure that they tell you what brand and what, what, um, what shape they're asking you to buy. If you, you know, if you ever go in, in, into another kind of uh, class. All right. 
So is there any questions about brushes? No. No, but the ones, you know, the ones that I bought, like, um, like my filbert. Today? So last week, we did something like this, which is, you know, these are examples that I did, flat wash. So that means the whole, the whole portion uh, is the same, uh, the same color, the same tone, and um, uh, it's the same amount of pigment. So depending on, on the type of pigment, so see the red gives a very uh, full um, cover. And if I put a little bit less pigment, then it gives this kind of finish. Whereas the blue, if it's full of pigment, it will give something like this. But if I put more water, it will show, it will show something like this. And that's because of the type of pigment. Each pigment is made of a different chemical composition and therefore will react differently with the water. And this was what you had to do for homework, something like this. It could have been something a little lighter as well, but a flat wash. So I, I did a red and a blue. Now during class, uh, I did one, but I don't have it here. Now you could, maybe you did something like this for, for, um, for homework, but see on this one, this is an example where it became almost a graded wash because it's darker here and lighter here. So it could be nice, a nice sky. I also wanted to show you, uh, so I had worked on an example for you guys, and then I dropped a few drops of water on my nice flat wash. So look what happened. Nice flowers. Look at how beautiful they are. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Yes. And then here, this is the same thing that happened. Mm -hmm. So if this ever happens and you really want to have a flat wash or you know, a surface that is all flat, you have to let this dry and then re-wet the whole thing <laughs> on top. That's what you have to do. Uh, so I've muted you, Linda. And if you ever need to talk, then you can just unmute yourself. All right. Uh, so I, I thought I'd show you the, these nice flowers. Sometimes you actually do want to do, to do something like this. But for today, what we are going to work on is something like this. So this is a flat wash like last week. And these are graded wash, or I should say graded washes. Uh, this is kind of like a purple color. So from light to dark, from dark to light. And in this case, I did from red to yellow without having a, a line in between. Now, before we move on to that, I forgot to so the first thing that I'm gonna uh, tell you to do is prepare your paper. So if you have not prepared your paper, this is a nine by 12 watercolor paper. And um, what I did is I taped it to a board because I find it's more convenient to work on. And then I, I split it in four like this, like we did in the first class. I like to use a small round brush to do my mix. And here, this is dried up blue from last week. So all I have to do is re-wet it with just a tiny bit of water. And now my blue is ready to use, to be used. Um, now, the consistency that I have at this time, this is the consistency of vegetable oil pretty much. And um, so this will give me a good pigmentation. If I add more water like this, it becomes a little bit more runny and it will just be a less, uh, less dark. I have more of the same color here, uh, which is almost the consistency of toothpaste because um, it had dried up and I just add a little bit of water before class. And that's my palette that I 
dropped on the floor. So uh, I lost some of it on the carpet below. Oops. So once I have made my color, to actually wet my paper. So I'm going to start uh, with this here so you can go see both my palette and you can see my paper uh, when I work. I usually have two bowls of water, one to clean my brushes and one that has the clean water in it. So I, I put my brush in clean water and that's what I use to wet my paper. So for the purpose of the demonstration, I am using an easel. And so therefore my paper is completely vertical. I recommend though that you use, uh, that, you, that you paint on a table and just have a little bit of an incline on, on, your, on your paper because painting vertically is very challenging. I can attest to that. All right, so now this is pretty, it's starting to be a little matte. And so therefore I'm going to do a graded wash. So to do a graded wash, I have to have more pigment at the top than at the bottom or vice versa. And I'm gonna put a little water on my brush and use this nice blue pigment, maybe a little bit more. So you can see what I'm doing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some color on my brush and <clears throat> use it at the top, but I don't want this same color throughout. So I'm not going to read it. So this is how it goes. I wanna make sure I don't put too much. Continue. Oops, too much at the bottom there. There. So once it's done, um, I need to put it like this because otherwise gravity starts making it go down, like you can see here. But if I put it flat like this and I let it dry, it will dry like a nice graded wash like it, like it is. So I'm gonna put it aside for now. Someone asked me about what if I have a kit like this, paint, paint color. So these little, each little um, rectangle is, is a color, a different color. And in this case, I have blues and yellows and you can see I've used it quite a bit. And uh, what I've decided to do now that, you know, when I run out of a color, I just buy the tube and, and replenish rather than buy another paint. Mm -hmm. But you can buy the paints individually. Mm -hmm. you know, if one, uh, if you run out of one color, you can just buy the one paint and replace it. So how do we work with this? Well, my little kit is like this and I have this space to mix colors in. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what I would, and you can see I, I've been using it, but I'm going to clean it first. So I'm just going to use, uh, uh, just wet them and wipe them up with a paper towel to clean them. So I don't know if you have this much, uh, this much space on your, but I have all this space for myself, mm, yeah, Sarah. Yeah, up here. Yours is a little smaller. Yeah, yeah a it's little a half smaller. box. I think, no, it's a quarter box or whatever. But, you know, one thing that could be useful is something like this. Uh, because see, in the middle here, this is all flat, this portion, which is in the middle. So you could use this to mix colors with. And you can, uh, in each well, you can uh, prepare a different color. And when it dries up, like it has here, then the next time you can just re-wet them and they're good to go. You don't have to throw this out. Okay. 
Um, so if you just have a small little box like you do, um, this, this is a good travel box actually, because this little thing here comes separate and then I can put it here, I think. No, it comes here on the side. And this is a travel box basically. So I could put the water here and then I have this mixing, these mixing surfaces. And some of them have, you know, a surface that's, that pulls under that gives you extra mixing surface. But if you just have this, or even just have what you have is this much, then you have like three panes to prepare your colors with. Mm -hmm. So that's what you should do. So let's say I'm gonna use my green uh, to do this. And I'm gonna put this right here. Change the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So this is my green here. Mm -hmm. And I cleaned my brush so that I don't contaminate my green. Or let's let's do the, the red, this this orange, it's red orange. So I put I put a lot of water on my brush and I wet I wet it. I wet the paint and I put it there. And when I put the brush back in the water, I don't I don't shake it in the water. I just get more water. That's all that I do. And now this is preparing this nice, beautiful, it's a red orange color. Uh, not one that I said to buy for this class, but it's just for demonstration purposes. So this is how I would prepare. Um, now, if you have a bigger brush, let's say this one would be filbert like this one. So this, this has a lot of a big belly and it will gather a lot of a lot of color uh, so you have to kind of scrape it against something like this so that you don't lose all this nice color that you have in the belly and you leave it in the box or on the surface see like this so now it's starting to get a little runny in here uh, and I have all this color and I could work with this. You gotta make sure that you prepare sufficient color uh, for this exercise, because if you run out of color in the middle, it's not gonna work. So I have color here, and maybe I'll demonstrate with this color. And so, I'm dipping into my clean water to get to wet this first. And just so that it can go faster, I've dried my brush and I'm just removing the excess water. And I'm just shaking it a little bit. So it's gonna dry faster. So I use my paper towel to remove a little bit of the color. Now I'm gonna use this brush uh, to do my flat wa uh, my graded wash with. And I'm using this color that I prepared here in my little box, which is red orange. It's not gonna be as easy with this other kind of brush, but let's try. Now I've, I've removed a little bit of, of pigment on my brush. I removed it on the paper towel. And I would have to have it dry this way mm -hmm. because um, it's actually, um, it's, it's, it was coming toward the bottom. And since I want to have to keep it as a graded wash, then this would be better. So if, I, if it dries this way, it will dry like a graded wash. Because if it dries the other way, it would, it would probably come down and become more of a flat wash. Did I answer your question, Sarah? Yes, thank you very much. Very good. All right.
righty then. So I'm going to demonstrate this time how to do a graded wash, but this time I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to premix uh, one, um, you know, I'm going to premix the colors and I'm going to make a dark blue and a light blue of the same blue, the ultramarine blue. So I'm going to mix one area of that dark blue with a lot of pigment. I'm going to use my small brush to do this. So this area here will be with more pigment. And then I'm going to mix another area here with less pigment like this. So this is the consistency. Oops. This here has a consistency of water. Whereas up here, this is more the consistency of oil. Like, so, so this way, uh, I'll first use this and then I'll use this at the end. All right, so I'm gonna use my, where's my other brush that I've been using? Not right here, it's hiding. Uh, so I'm gonna use my flat brush uh, to wet my paper. I'll do this on here like this. But I think this is too much water. So for better result, always wait for the paper to become somewhat matte before you start. And I'm just I'm just shaking it so that it's going to uh, get a little, a little bit more of that. And you can also tap it with a clean, uh, with a clean paper towel. There, this is good. Now I'm gonna use this brush and uh, let me make sure that you guys can see. So I'm gonna paint on this surface. Actually, I'm gonna leave it like this. And um, I'm gonna first dip into the portion that has more paint, more pigment. And as I'm coming down now, I'm gonna dip into the portion that has less pigment. So you have to work really fast um, so that um, this way it doesn't create a line in the middle. This one that I did here. Now there is a little bit of a, like a little lint in here. And if I touch it now and I grab that, that lint, it will show forever. So I have to let it dry and grab the lint after. But did that help, Claudia? Yes. Um. So now I want to do the other demonstration where we're gonna go from one color to another color. And to do that, I'm going to first demonstrate it and then you can try it. Uh, so I'm gonna prepare some blue. And I'm going to also prepare some yellow. So I have some yellow in this little cubby here. So this is my yellow that I have here. We actually don't have enough. So squeeze out a little bit more. There, this is good. Try not to drop my palette one more time. That would not be good. So um, this is nice because it's nice and runny. All right. So now the trick, if I want the bottom part to be yellow and the top part 
to be blue and is to put the blue at the top and then in the middle, I have to be very careful. So I'll show you how to do this. So first I'm gonna wet it. Too much water, remove the excess. Okay, and then with a clean brush, I'm gonna put some blue on the top. And don't really go past the middle. Clean my brush. Make sure it's completely clean. Go with the yellow. And go from the bottom where I want it to be totally yellow going back into the blue. Not all the way to the top. And voila. See, now I have a nice gradation that goes from the blue to the yellow. And there's no straight, very, uh, very uh, important line in the middle in between. Now I'm gonna give you some time to try this. So remember, you want to prepare both your colors separately and then first you paint, you wet the paper. Then you paint one color a little past the middle. Clean your brush completely. Then dip your brush into the new color. Go from the bottom and go up into the other paint. Then let it dry. So it's when preparing for, you know, twice as much uh, space to cover, like for example, this, um, then you have to prepare twice as much color on your, uh, on your palette before you start. So let's say I'm gonna do, let's say I'm gonna do a graded wash that looks like that water over there, the one that I showed you. So I'm going to do blue, starting with, with some blue. That's going to be very watery, like this. And the blue will go into um, like a, a blue purple. And the blue purple, purple is easily made by uh, mixing the ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson that we have. So let's say I use some uh, ultramarine blue, and I mix it with a little bit of a lizard crimson. Uh, then it gives me a nice color that is like a purplish color, like this. So this is my nice uh, purple color that it gives me. So I just need more blue because the red is very, very strong. So I'm going to prepare some of this purple for the bottom. This is what I'm preparing here. And I'm going to need some true blue for the top. And because I dropped my palette, then there's some, there is some red into my blue. I'm just going to remove it. OK, this is better. So now I have the blue at the top. And actually, I think I need a little bit more of the blue. Ultramarine blue. OK, this will be better. I want to make sure that I don't run out. All right. Uh, this is better. Okay. So now we're trying to do this. 
So we're going to start with a very light color going towards a darker color at the bottom. So first things first, wet the paper. So I'm cleaning my brush. And once I have a clean brush, I go into the clean water and I'm going to wet my paper. <clears throat> So if your, if your paper is not wet enough, it will be very hard to do this. Um, but it's too, if it's too wet, you'll get some effects that you don't necessarily need or want. Now that I've wet my paper, I'm gonna start with a very, very faint blue. So this will be the start, the start of it will be very, very light in color at the top. Very, very light is what I want to start with. And then as I come down, I'm adding more pigment into my blue, like so. But not, not a whole lot. Just a little bit more. And then a little bit more. And then I'm adding even more. Now I'm going to dip into my purple. I have the effect of having a changing color. Starting here. Now I need more pigment to have a darker color towards the bottom and even more pigment at the bottom. See how many times I went back to dip into my colors at the bottom? Voila. So now we have nice something that can be represented, that can represent the water. And I could too clean my brush and dry it on you know, on the paper towel and just go sideways with my brush mm -hmm. and create those nice effect of the lines in the water while it's still wet. See? So now we have the effect of the water. I think it's time you try to. Is there any questions? Right here. <laughs> I should. So for homework, I thought I would assign you guys to do, you know, uh, another graded wash. This time, try to use your own colors. So here, I simply went from blue to purple. But if you want to do two colors that are uh, opposite on the color wheel, like something like this, you know, orange to blue, you can do that. Or, um, you know, do uh, yellow, yellow to lime green to blue, or maybe magenta to lime green, two complementary colors. And in between, it's these two colors that I've mixed that gave me the orange. And, uh, you know, Remember that a graded wash is a great thing to do water. You know, in this case, just, you know, very light blue that goes into a nice uh, purple color. And to make the purple, we simply mixed the alizarin crimson with the ultramarine blue. So try to do it, you know, another graded wash on this side. But I want to remind you guys that so far, we have done a flat wash that's very good for a nice sky. And we have done a graded wash, which will be very good for water. So maybe, uh, you know, next class or the last class, we will paint a little landscape with some water 
and a sky and a little bit of landscape. That would be nice. So next week, we're going to talk about the, the paints. That's the one part that I want to talk a little bit about. So I hope you have a nice week.